Hello, and thank you so much for joining me again for another 3D how-to video. Today, we're going to take a look at a very basic tool within 123D Design, as well as many different 3D Design softwares, and that feature is the sweep. So quickly, what I'm going to do is mock up a vase, and I'm going to show you how to create handles on this vase with the sweep feature. The two components of every sweep feature is the path and the profile. So if we're looking at a handle, the path is going to be a curved line going from one section of the vase to the other, and the profile will be the shape that a cross section of that handle will take. So in our case, we're going to use a circle, but in, in any application, you can change the, both the shape of the path and the profile. First, let's draw the path. So what we'll need to do for that is to create a plane in the middle of the vase. So we draw a plane on the default grid, and then we rotate that plane to be in the center of the vase. That looks pretty much center right there. You can be a little bit more accurate if you feel like it, but for this purpose, I'm just doing it freehand. So now that we have the plane in the center of the vase, we're gonna create whatever shape we want for the path of the um, sweep to be. So for this, we're gonna start right here. Let's make it uh, outline only so we can see inside the vase. And we're going to use the spline tool to click and form our handle. Let's do a little bit more refining to this handle. There we go. So now you see how the handle is going to be created. Next what we need to do is create the profile. So, let's, so next let's make another plane and make it connected to this path that we created. So same as before, draw a plane on the default grid, rotate it so it's vertical. All profiles have to be perpendicular to the path that they follow. So this, in this case, it's going to be running this way so that it is uh, perpendicular to the path that we just created. So in this case, it has to be vertical and in this specific plane, opposite to which the path is created. So let's line it up with the path. And once we see it connected, choose a view that is uh, perpendicular to the path, and we're going to draw a circle. This might take a little bit of getting used to to understand where the endpoint of the path is. But we're going to put it right here. When in doubt, moving the profile a little bit further into the path is always a good way to go just so it isn't actually uh, disconnected from the path itself. Let's make that a little bit bigger because we want a little bit of a thicker handle. Okay, so now you see we have both the path right here and the profile right here we just created. So let's go up to construct. Right next to extrude is sweep and it's gonna prompt us to choose the profile which is the circle, and the path, which is the curved line. 
So since it's uh, it's starting within an object, its default position is to subtract. So let's select new solid, put it back on material only, and there you see we have a handle. Sorry about that, it looks like uh, my recording software crashed or didn't record the rest of this, so I'm just going to continue where we left off. So if we wanted to make a handle on the other side of the vase to make it symmetrical, uh, we're, we can use the mirror feature in order to copy it over. So I'm going to show you my really quick uh, way that I found the, the most foolproof way in order to mirror uh, features and objects. So like before, we're going to make a plane in the middle of the vase. lined up to make sure it's as center as possible. So there are two parts to what I found to be the best way to mirror a feature. And there's, there's two pitfalls that I've run into with this. One is it doesn't recognize the mirror plane properly, and two is it doesn't recognize the solid that you want to mirror properly. And so I'm going to show you the way that I found to make sure that this happens every single time. First, in order for it to recognize the mirror plane properly, we're actually going to extrude the mirror plane so that one face of a rectangle or a rectangular prism that we create is actually the mirror plane. So after creating the rectangle, we have our mirror plane right here. This face that I'm pointing to right here, that will be the plane that will be show the center that we will actually mirror around. So the second pitfall that I'm going to address is not selecting the whole solid or selecting it in the right way that the software recognizes. And so to fix this, we have to have access to the whole solid. Right now, the handle is slightly within this vase. So let's actually click on the vase and hide it so that we can select the whole object. So to go through the, the feature, we're going to go to Pattern, Mirror. To select the solid, a lot of the times, if, if you weren't to hide the vase, you would only be selecting this outside face of this handle. And so to select the whole object, we have to make sure the whole object is highlighted. Next, we just select the mirror plane, which will be this face of the rectangular prism that we created, and that way the object gets mirrored properly. Just to show you real quick what happens if you don't select the whole object, if we go to Pattern, Mirror, and just select this outside face, so you see that the, the uh, inside faces aren't selected, and we go to Mirror Plane, select this face, we get this invalid operation error. And this is what I've run into so many times before I found out what the main issues were when trying to mirror. So again, mirror, make sure the whole object is selected, select the mirror plane. We can now delete this object that we use to create the mirror plane. Hide our sketches and show our solids and meshes. And there we have the full vase. So I hope you got these main two objectives out of this where using the sweep and the proper way to mirror a feature or object. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear them. I would love to get more material for you guys. And if you have any questions or have any requests, uh, please leave it in the comments and uh, I'll be happy to get to them in future videos.